shoulder, guys, gals, and legionnaires. Rykon here, and welcome back to Kenshi. We are back at our castle, the Sand Castle, where things are having to make, well, we're having to have some adjustments. We are starting to run a little bit low on water, surprisingly so. Well, I guess not surprisingly. We are using a fair amount of water in the process to create bread and then also to create chew sticks on the sides as we are still trying to get our food sorted out. We have a fair amount available to us in the form of wheat straw. Um, over actually in our supplies, we've got uh, a lot. We've got a lot of wheat straw. So really, we're not having too much trouble there. I'm thinking we might need to do some research to make these automated because then it's just going to free up more hands to be used elsewhere. Hanbu and Spot seem to be having a little bit of issue with the uh, iron plates, which happens from time to time. I can never predict exactly why they seem to have issues uh, picking up and dropping off because, uh, well, yeah, there they go. They sort themselves out eventually. It just seems to be a, an interesting thing that they'll do occasionally. <laughs> Rain, go ahead and hop outside. But the reason I have you all here with me today is our travelers have made it to Squin. Now, poor Sad Neil isn't doing great. Sand isn't doing amazing either, but they did make it here in one piece. Well, yes, they are still one piece. They haven't lost any pieces, which is good. But we're going to get Sand to, to head inside and see if there is anything that he is able to purchase that might be worthwhile. Now, I believe it's going to be you that we're wanting to have a talk to. Let's see. Anything to trade, anything of use, assassins, rags, might actually be worth us getting because that is an armor type that um, Sand and some of the others have been using and it's not a research that we actually know. The value of it here, that's really affordable. So let's go ahead and purchase you. Excellent. Now, anything else that we're wanting to pick up here at the same time, I, I don't think so. I mean, the backpacks are always useful. I'm, I'm half tempted to pick up the small thieves because they don't give us any negatives. So... Yeah, I think it could be worthwhile as having some of those. It's going to cost 3000 for the two, and I think that's actually a pretty good deal, all things considered. So, with that, our trade here is done. These three are going to be heading back on down towards the sand castle. We might do a stop by the way station though, just to see if we can pick up some extra food for our team, as we are going to need that little bit of a stop gap. All the same, we are going to continue on. Before long, the Sheik are going to be here. Yes, they are coming to collect food, and we don't have a huge amount of it. Something that I've been noticing that's an issue with our wall design as well is that every episode when we start, or at least at various points throughout it, this here becomes, well, accessible again. So I think I'm going to have to make some adjustments there. All things that I'm going to do off camera. I just love how mangled that is. <laughs> I mean, hey, it's a design that works. It's, it's tried, it's tested, it's doing what we need it to do. But all the same, we're going to continue construction on here and I will join you once again very soon. All right, our travelers have finally made it. Poor Sad Neil, poor Sand, not in a great condition overall at this stage. We're going to go and see if we can pick up some supplies here. Generally, we are doing okay back home overall, um, but being able to uh, maybe offload some of these might be good. And as you can see, the price markup here is amazing. We have a 100% chance to actually sell these off at this stage. So we could make a fair, a fair bit of uh, funding from doing this. So we'll go ahead and start getting rid of some of them. Uh, we can see that this is just worth, each CPU unit is worth so much, so, so much. I'm tempted to pick up some research books here. I honestly don't know how many we will need. We already know all the blueprints that you have on the side here for us. Let's say if we were to go wild, how much is that going to cost us? It's going to cost us a fair amount to have all those extra books, but I think it's probably going to be worth just having them stashed away because we don't know if we're going to need just the basic ones in the future. We'll sell off a few more CPU units. The price hasn't really changed at all at this point. And let's see if we can get rid of some of the cheaper things here. 
Um, actually, in saying that, the price mark up here isn't as good for skeleton eyes, so we won't sell them off. Um, but we can see that the muscles are still worth a fair amount. And we can actually, well, we could get rid of that there. Let's go for the robotics components instead. There we go. I feel like we're looking pretty good after that. Giving us a little bit of a boost back up. And, yeah, I mean, I gotta think, maybe we don't need all of them. Okay, let's be a, let's be a little controlled. We'll have it be kind of settled at that. We might just, we could take one of those back. I think that's enough in the way of books. I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, we're not going to pick up anything else at this stage because we actually have a lot of resources back at home that we can use ourselves. So we don't have that to worry about. But what we do still need is just actual food by itself. I mean, the sand does have these food cubes that are coming in, which is great. But we just want to be certain. So let's see if we can pick up anything extra. Um, no. No, we can't, is the answer to that. <laughs> and there really isn't anything else here that we are going to want. I, I mean, I'm half tempted to grab some wooden backpacks just for some of our workers. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's going to help them just haul things around a lot more. And obviously, quite a few cats here. We can go ahead and start to make a whole heap of that ourselves. Do we want to sell anything else? The eyes sell for a lot less here. We could hold on to them, sell them at a different point, or we could just look at 89% and just say, you know what, what the hell, we'll do it. We'll make it, we'll have it be a thing. This, yeah, the sell value, 1600. We can live with that, we can live with that. That's given us a really decent amount, and that's just from one trip. In the future, who knows what else we'll be able to get. But we desperately need to get these two back home. Sad Neil needs to get some repairs. And, well, I know that Sand's been really looking forward to seeing this place once again. And once Sand is back, we'll be closing those gates entirely. Let's have a look and see how long it's going to be until the others turn up. It's still about a day. A day and a half. Okay, so with that, let us continue to advance time. And finally, our team have made it back just as I have started to install a new well on the outside with our bread making taking back off again. We have had a lot of need for water. So, yeah, we've been we've been holding out. We're making it. We've got a whole big load of farming happening here in the in the in the leaf district now. So, yeah. Now, Sad Neil, we should be able to get you some repairs. Um, we do have skeleton repair kits here, which we are finally going to be able to use. Now, as to who's going to be using them, I don't know who has the best robotics out of everyone here, but I've got to assume that Hobbs is going to be the man for the job. He actually does have an authentic skeleton repair kit on him already, and I don't think that he actually has that as a... A thing that he will do um, yeah so I'm gonna go ahead and just shift click medic here and just see if we can get robotics on here no uh, hmm is robotics in here somewhere not that I can see not that I can see we might be able to kind of force him to, to heal sad Neil maybe but it's so good to have these two back. First thing we actually need to do with sand, well, there's a few things that we need to do. We are going to go and just drop off these backpacks into here. Um, you can go ahead and put your shirt back on, buddy. We'll just drop that into here for the time being as well. You can keep all of your medical equipment on you. I think that's okay. I actually might leave one in there for now. Uh, those extra cacti you can drop on the ground. They are going to be used before long. And those food cubes we are going to drop into our general food storage which you can see doesn't look you know amazing right now we can learn the assassin rags because well that's what they're there for we'll drop those backpacks off and yeah you can keep that splint kit on you my friend but as for the books we want to go ahead and drop those off but yeah sad neil unfortunately sad neil we're kind of just going to have to we don't have robotics yet at this stage so we don't have a way to um, have him rest in a bed 
We might need to send him somewhere for that. The authentic skeleton repair kit will repair him over time. Um, so yeah, we're gonna go ahead and put Sad Neil down here for now, and we're gonna go run into here. Um, let's see, Kiji, what are you doing? Operating machine. Okay, Sad Neil is not a machine to operate. Thank you. Uh, but we'll go over here and we will do some repairs with Hobbs. Um, Kiji, actually, what what were you doing then? Did you? Oh, you were you were grabbing the cacti. <laughs> okay, that's all right. That's all right. Now, dog meat. Let's see. I think we want to go ahead and put you back onto. Well. There are a few jobs that aren't really happening at the moment. We want you to be back with Hanbu. Um, but as you can see, the Iron District, there isn't too much going on because we're actually stocked up on, on copper and a whole heap of other good things. So we don't have that happening too much. But Hanbu is over here. So we'll see if we can pick you out amongst everyone else with a bodyguard. Now, everyone in the Iron District is wearing mercenary leather armor and they have the samurai pants at this stage so everyone's pretty well equipped um, as much as they can be uh ooh Hobbs how did that go are you still on your way over here or have you just decided that uh, you got better things to do he is trying to engineer buddy if you could just keep on those repairs we might just have to keep an eye on him Sad Neil's just standing that's really interesting um Oh no, he is. He is awake now. <laughs> I thought he was still rebooting, but no, no, he's he's okay. And Hobbs just needs to, uh, he just needs to stick with it. He is going to be able to repair him. And Sad Neil, well, we'll see where we're going to be able to use Sad Neil. I mean, this place is better than probably what he expected, but we are still going through a little bit of, uh, you know, the hunger pangs, especially for our animals. So he might be thinking that cannibalism is still on the horizon. With a nice new sunrise, a new day greeting us, we can hope at the very least we'll be able to get some of this research underway. Okay, so finally, one of the main things that we are going to be able to research is Tech Level 5. We have enough ancient science books to get it done, finally. And the next thing that we are going to want to research is the large building shells. Now, it, it, it's, it's tough to know exactly what we want to go with. Heavy building foundations is also good. It's fundamental engineering to enable us to build larger, sturdier structures. That sounds good, but we need large building shells to be able to get a piece of research that we've actually had for flippin' ages, the advanced outpost blueprint. So we need large and medium building shells to be able to actually learn this thing. Um, so, ideally, we will be able to learn that. So I think that's what we're going to spend one of our books on. Large building shells. So, boom. There we go. Now we have one other that we can spend. What do we want to do it on? Well, I really want to use uh, at least one of these ancient science books on getting an automatic hemp loom because we have so much hemp coming in right now. The the kind of... Uh, the the bottleneck that we're getting in our production is fabric more often than not so if we can have that process automated that's gonna be great we will have a look through the rest though to see what we might be able to do unfortunately we're not going to be able to do the doubles anytime soon we also need an ai core to be able to do the double barrel harpoon turret so that's not going to happen uh yeah yet Automatic flower grinding is nice, but it's not an absolute necessity for us, so we won't be worrying about that. Stone refinery, kind of the same deal there as well. Smithing, let's see. I, I It would be really cool to be able to get into plate armor crafting, but in saying that, yeah, I mean, where do we want to spend this final one? Where do we want to spend this final one? We could go for heavy building foundations. I don't know, I actually have no idea what that's going to give us. I think it might lead into things. You know what, let's wait until Tech Level 5 is done, but I know for a fact we definitely need this. So, Hobbs, you're going to be a busy boy yet again, but you are still healing, Sad Neil, which is good, and I would like it if you could continue to do that. Oh, his robotics is terrible, but Sad Neil is actually looking pretty good. As to what we can get Sad Neil to do for us, really i i'm not a hundred percent sure now his athletics isn't great at the moment but 
he does have the ability to get incredibly fast. So whatever he is doing, I think we want him to be running around a lot so he can improve his athletics. So I think we might get him assisting our man Rimen here, who is effectively doing a whole heap of different uh, logistics things, making sure that water gets brought places, making sure that steel gets brought places. So I think that's how we are going to be utilizing our man. You'll also notice that uh, with all this increased uh, water usage, or rather water drilling, welling, sucking of water, <laughs> it's requiring a lot more power. So we are gonna have to chuck in a few more of these bad boys as well. So construction will be continuing. Oh, and just cutting back real quick, it seems the wind has picked back up again and you can see that our power has shot back up. Our battery charge is so large that I don't think we're gonna be running out of power, so I think we aren't gonna extend the power network just yet. As long as we have windy days, we're looking perfectly fine. We do need to have some kind of generator system in effect, should we need it, but I think we're gonna be okay. Now Hobbs is finally back to researching. We can see that Tech Level 5 is on its way. As to what awaits us in Tech Level 5, I am excited. We'll have to wait and see. One other small little note here is uh, Hong has 69 armor smithing. Uh, it's very close to actually surpassing sand when it comes to actually creating armor. Hong has been working super hard at making us some extra mercenary leather armor, which I've been kind of divvying out to everyone around here. So damn good job, I say. Damn good job. And Sand, he's going to go to sleep, and I don't blame him. He deserves a little bit of a rest after all of that. And Park, obviously, is still working really hard on his Nodachis, but they take a long time to create. I think he's only ever made a few of them. And uh, yeah, we don't see any new ones stashed away here yet. We still have lots of things we need to sell off, so I think a trip back to Squin or to the way station will be in order yet again. Okay, I have put together something of a team of Gary and Sad Neil who are going to be going and paying a visit to Squin. Don't know how they're going to react to Sad Neil, but we've got to hope that, you know, it's going to be somewhat positive, right? Now, Gary's athletics is, let's see, pretty good. So Sad Neil's going to be having a little bit of a time trying to keep up with them, but I think we're going to be okay. We're going to travel onwards towards Squin, hopefully not encountering any trouble along the way, but we'll be ready to intervene should we need to. All right, so it hasn't been that long at all, and our team have managed to make it back to Squin. You can still see the remains of our place together, so at the very least, we have somewhere to stay when we come back here. But we still have a little bit of work to do here, selling a few things off, buying some food, and just keeping the castle float. All right, and with a few trades made, we are now heading on back home. Gary is laden down with a whole heap of extra food for us and some extra backpacks for our workers. Now, this is food that we don't really want to be giving back to the the shack here because, well, we've purchased it. We we paid a lot for this. And we barely have enough food for ourselves, so we're going to have to think very carefully about how we manage here. And you know what? If you want to bag check them, you can chase them down. A metallic boy and Gary the Garu are going to continue running on. <laughs> and he might, might just be able to catch him. But we don't have anything illegal, so I'm not all that concerned with it. Let's just go ahead and fast forward, see if he can. Nah, not a chance. Gary is running to intercept. And they're going to be back before we know it. And there we are. Tech level 5 is complete. I'm very happy about that. And our two here, they're okay. They're being chased by spiders right now, but they're out pacing them. But we have tech level 5. So let's have a look and see what we now have access to. If there's anything new that's popped up because of that. I'm hoping that there are some things here. I mean, obviously, these were here before. Uh, under defense... Large defensive walls, that's definitely new. We need heavy building foundations to be able to research that. So it's the first thing that we're seeing where we need that heavy foundation research. Okay, and large defensive walls would be really quite nice. Looking into here, amplified generators. That's a level five. Skeleton repair beds, that's an old one for us. Advanced brassery power, sounds even better. 
and looking through the rest here, yeah. The amplified generators, it's like a whole heap of different ways for us to generate more power. Now, hydroponics, that's where things get a little bit more interesting. We need an AI core to be able to research that. With that, we'll be able to grow things that you just can't usually grow here. Yeah, I imagine it'll take a fair amount of water, but we're getting there with that. And oh, looks like we have actually run into a little bit of trouble. They were outrunning them just fine. They are in self-preservation now, so we are going to have to go and check in on R2. But looking through the rest of the place here, advanced stone mining, that's all research for us. Iron plates, the next level of it. Again, don't think we're going to be requiring that, but we have advanced weaponsmithing. Okay, so most of the stuff from now on just looks like it's going to need ancient science books, which aren't impossible for us to find. Oh, would you look at that? <laughs> They're actually right here. Um, so they brought them all the way back with them. Well, we can help our two out here. We're going to go ahead, not dismantle. No, what am I doing? We're going to go ahead and open the gate and we're going to get the Iron District. We're going to get everybody out here and we are going to take these skin spiders down. So if you two could start to run back inside to some form of safety, that would be swell. There is a good chance that they could get downed here, which is unfortunate. We can't do a huge amount to stop it right this second. I didn't realize that they were so close to home. Gary's actually doing a number on them. There we go, attack target. That is what we are after. Now it looks like Barker is going to heroically run out ahead of the rest here and try and do something. Who are you? Are you one of our... No, you're one of the Kraals Chosen. You actually managed to get back up onto your feet. That is amazing. I admire your tenacity. Remen, the first one out the gate. Sand running to assist as well. Let's see how they can manage. Now, they are all backpacked up, which I'm actually okay with in this fight because um, it's going to give them some negatives helping improve their combat overall and it looks like we are just going to absolutely swamp this thing park coming in to assist as well we're okay we are okay and they have made it back finished yes yes they are now i don't think we have looted them we want to make sure that that actually does happen so Remen, can we get you over here to finish them off stubbs musu isn't around. oh actually stubbs is here to do the job actually stubbs you're the man for it Rimmon, you can go back inside. Stubbs, we want you to finish them off for good. And Stubbs is looking a little bit different now. He's rocking some of the uh, the new armor that we had set up for him to be able to utilize. We're in that black shirt, un shirt underneath and with his cool metallic arm. He's looking, he's actually kind of looking tough and maybe, maybe, maybe just a little bit cool. But don't tell him that or go to his head. Stubbs, well done, my boy. You killed the lot. So, with those two back, we obviously need to make sure that they are seen to. Gary has been seen to. Sad Neil hasn't, because I don't think, again, anyone's specifically on robotics. Uh, so, we're going to ask Hobbs very nicely to walk away from his research for a second or two and just do some repairs on Sad Neil. Sad Neil's just going to hang out, just sit still for a second. And, Gary, we need to drop some of these things off, namely the meat. The meat is for our friends down here for our animals to have to eat. Um, the other stuff, we are probably just going to be picking back up again. I, I, most of this food, we're going to have to pick back up before our friends arrive back. I mean, they will see that we're hard done by, that we're a little bit more emaciated than last time. So maybe, just maybe, they'll take it easy on us, since as as we are still contributing to their industry overall. If only we could just trade them some things to kind of placate them, that would be good. But they seem to be interested in food more than anything. And I mean, it does seem like we produce a whole heap of food, so I can understand why they would think that. But yeah, I mean, we've got a fair amount of sandwiches that are starting to come in now at this stage. So I can kind of understand it. <sighs> Still, it's a bit of a dick move. I feel like they're shooting themselves in the foot. But what can you do? What can you do? Uh, now, looking back at the others here, I am going to want to divvy out some more backpacks. I have given the thieves backpacks out, uh, just kind of willy-nilly at this stage, because I need them to have a little bit of extra carrying capacity just to be able to make their life a bit easier. Firebone, I don't think that's going to be an absolute must for you. For the cooking, yeah, not so much. And obviously, Ridley, there are a whole heap of things, yeah, that we need to remove. Probably need to go through and... Uh, 
do that to a whole heap of them here. Green, we could look at getting you sorted. And you know what? I think we're going to. We're going to give you that backpack there, buddy. It's all yours now. Hobbs, you still have a large one. Azumi, you don't have one. Let's give you one so that you've got a really massive backpack on you. Excellent. We still have a leather vest that we can divvy out to someone, but yeah, all in all, I'm pretty happy with how we are at the moment. We are still a little ways off the others arriving. We're looking at 14 hours before some bandits turn up, and then four hours after that, the Sheik are going to be there. But this is going to give us a chance to check our new and improved Iron District in action as they go out to fight, along with the Caton District as well, they're all fighters. The Leaf District, we are going to have them be a little bit more peaceful and focused on farming when we can. Oh, research has been completed. I was just watching this tornado of them running around adding things to a cacti farm. It's a little entertaining to say the least, uh, but large building shells. So with that, finally, finally, we can just grab, let's see, Ridley here. We're going to get you to take out a little piece of research that we've had in here for a very, very long time. Or maybe we can just learn it from there. I think you actually do need to have it in your inventory. And now we know advanced outpost blueprints. What does that mean for us? What does that mean for us? Well, let's have a look at buildings first of all and see what else we have. A watchtower. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Now we're talking. Now we are talking. And look at that. We can actually fit it in there. Yes! That's what I was hoping, that we'd be able to fit a structure kind of like this in these spaces. And holy crap, it just fits. Those building material requirements are quite high though, as you will see. 60 and 10. We don't have a huge amount to spend the rest of our building materials on though, so I'm tempted just to chuck this thing down here. Eventually, oh, there is a little bit of intersection going on there. So let's go maybe like that. Uh, if we can move it, that would be great. You know what? I'm going to place some of these things down. But before we do that, let's have a look at the others. I'm getting, I'm just excited. I'm excited. So we have the Y house, which is like a much bigger version of this one here. That's going to be our main housing that we're going to use. I think the snail house is, let's see, actually pretty big as well. Nice. I think that's what's used for most of the bars. So I think this will be our bar. This is going to be the punchy gar, uh, which will be in this section here. We're just going to have to figure out how we can do that. The station house is absolutely massive as well. So we have these really nice, really nice big buildings that we can use. I kind of feel like we maybe want to swap this one out now. That's a lot of work though. We have a lot in and around here. I honestly, I think keeping it as it is, is probably going to be the best move. I think it's maybe building these elsewhere might be better. But yeah, we have all these new buildings. Super friggin' happy about that. And the watchtowers especially, really stoked about that. I, I don't think we're gonna see uh, buildings anywhere else. Yeah, not that I can think of. Yeah, although, oh, we need to upgrade this bench as well. I think we'll let Hobbs continue doing what he's doing for now, but we will, we will upgrade it. Uh, it's not going to take him too long to actually get some of those things done, but yeah, we are going to go ahead and chuck down some of these watchtowers. I'm going to have a look and see if we can get some by the front wall here, because that would just be amazing to have some turrets on top of that. Incredible even, incredible. Okay, I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so at this stage, I have just asked for these two to be constructed. Eventually, we are going to want one here and one here. Uh, and we're going to have to do some semi-reconstruction of the wall in this space to be able to accommodate a very large building, which is going to go in here. We, go, we are going to have our main kind of crafting still set in this position here. But uh, yeah, I think we want to have like our main center of the city up and in, in this region. That should work for us, and oh man, this keeps happening. I feel like I am going to have to redesign this a little bit here, maybe have it connecting at that point, which is a little bit wider than I would like. Um, yeah, it just, it, it gets rebuilt, and it's fine, and then all of a sudden it isn't, so I'm not 100% how we can overcome that, but nevertheless, I shall try. And so we're going to go ahead and start advancing time once again. Ooh, we have completed the automatic hemp loom, which I don't know if this is just going to automatically, I don't think it is, no. So we are going to have to create somewhere else for that to go, and we are going to need to have someone that's constantly 
kind of refreshing that. I believe the hemp looms can only be built inside, so we are still going to need to try and work with the space if we can. All right, I'm going to see what I can do. Okay, turns out we can actually construct some of them on top of the building as well. So we are going to be using some of the real estate that's up here to help produce more fabric for us. At least that's the hope. But obviously, there is a lot of construction that's happening at the moment. I'm not so concerned about the wall right now. We don't have any major, major threats on their way. The bandits we are going to fight outside. And they are still about 11 hours away. As to whether or not we will have any of this stuff finished by then, I'm not so sure. But we do have our very tough and capable force to fight them when they arrive. Okay, so our next level of research bench has been constructed. As to what we're going to want to try and move on to next, I think we want to have a look at defenses. The large defensive walls would be nice to be able to get to eventually. I think we need to have a look at doing the heavy building foundation. I think that will help us out in the future. And yes, it is using one of our engineering research books, but we're going to have to bite the bullet on that one, I think. Hydroponics would be great to get into as well, but an AI core is going to be very hard for us to find. Eventually though, maybe, just maybe we can find that. What we can have a look at though is spending some of the other research books that we have on some of the other things that we just have left behind. Uh, that's all advanced, but we can do thievery training and lockpicking takes up a fair few of those books but those books aren't too expensive and they're relatively easy for us to come across so we should be able to achieve that without too much trouble okay so the first the first of our towers is complete and heavy building foundations is done as well but we can see how high this thing stands it's absolutely massive really really going to give a huge amount of uh, range for our harpooners to be able to harpoon from. Looking at defense, if we are gonna put a Mark II turret with a light on top of here, where, oh where can we put them? Oh, look at that, we can put them in every damn direction. You know what, having them on the wall, I don't think is going to be a thing anymore. Primarily, we're probably gonna to wanna to have them over this side here so that they can try and shoot down once others actually get inside. This is going to be a very difficult place for someone to break into. I would think, especially with these extra defenses on top of this tower here, they are going to have a hell of a time. Yeah, the sand castle is really actually starting to feel like a castle. Now we are under an hour away from our attack that's going to be happening from some dust bandits. I haven't seen them yet. We do have some Sheik warriors who are kind of just hanging out doing their thing obviously you can see 100 guardians are incredibly good at what they do this is kind of why we don't want to piss the sheik off but obviously they don't seem to have they don't, they don't hold back when they're taking food <laughs> they just they kind of take absolutely freaking everything so i still feel like we are probably going to uh, have to uh, adjust the amount that they're taking uh, looks like we might even have this up and running before long. This is kind of good because it does get our building material production back into gear. Uh, because it's kind of been stagnant for a while. Just because we've kind of been just maxed out. Stubbs is all the way up there at the moment. Three stories high. Um, probably more so than that. Working on our first harping turret up here. Very good, my sir. Very good. But yeah. They should be out here somewhere. We haven't seen them on the map just yet, but it doesn't mean that they're not, uh, they're not around. Hmm. Let's have a quick look at factions and see. Uh, 27 minutes, 26 minutes. Okay, so they should be getting closer at this stage. We'll just keep our eyes kind of semi-peeled. I am assuming they are going to be coming from the front. <laughs> They could be coming from elsewhere, but every single other time. Ah, now they start moving towards us. And yeah, so they're moving from up here. So, okay, that counter is until they actually spawn in. And they seem to come from the same place, which would make me think that there is a bandit camp up here. We could have a look at potentially taking that out. It's a bit of a mission, but with our iron district, we could probably, we could probably achieve that. I mean, we are going to have to go against the Band of Bones again, because I believe that they are back and functional and doing what they were doing before. Hmm. 
Yes, we'll definitely keep our eyes on them. So we're going to go ahead and jump until the others arrive. And we're going to face them. We're going to meet them with steel. So something that's a little alarming is poor Bonnie here seems to be having quite a bad time. She's starving and I can't seem to be able to get her to eat. Um, now we do have our, our dried meat in there, which the others are eating just fine. They haven't taken to eating the meat wraps, but I'm pretty sure they can. I'm pretty sure they can eat almost anything. So I don't know why she's not eating. And she's gone unconscious again. I, I can't... Uh, this isn't good. This isn't good. Um, let's see. Can I get someone that has a backpack to run over here real quick? Hammett, I'm going to try and see if we can get you to save the day here. Um, yeah, I, I don't know what else we can do. She's kind of just refusing to eat. Now, usually when you are in a, in a group and you have... Let's just put you here for now, standing next to her. We could try and put her in a bed. She might get fed. I'm still worried about the our group turning up here. But I'm still trying to focus on Bonnie here because uh, this is not good. Yeah, maybe bed is going to be the best option. Still starving, getting up, and she's just refusing to eat anything. Um, so yeah, we've had all kinds of different food here for her, but she's just uh, she's not wanting to eat. If we go ahead and pick her up and put her into a bed, I don't think she's going to get fed either. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, we can't we can't exactly trade anything to her either. Uh, only thing I can think of is let's go ahead and just drop some food down in front of her, and she she ate it. She ate it. Oh, joy. Okay, okay. That's good. That's a good sign. So we just need to have food on the ground for her, and then she's okay with eating it. A very particular pup, it would seem. Sometimes that happens. I've had animals in the past like that in my own life that are very particular about when, where, and how they eat their food. So, let's see. We did actually, during all of that, complete one of these turrets, and I'm going to go ahead and steal Green. I actually want you to be up here all the time, Green. Now, I know he's, he's been doing a fantastic job he's a swell dude he's actually probably quite good at farming now yeah he's not half bad but really this is where this is where his expertise lie and oh my gosh athletics 100 percent. but yeah my dude we're going to be taking you off all of that stuff and we are going to be getting you to be our our overwatch you're going to keep an eye on us at all times and we are actually going to go and put you into the Katun district sad neil and gary you guys are back so you can go back to your respective places uh sad neil being in the iron district maybe not because we are going to be throwing you into a whole heap of trouble so the leaf district for now and gary you'll jump back into there with us we'll let that all balance out where are these folks looking on the map our bandits are still very, very far away, and it uh, looks like we might actually have some traders that arrive before the others do. So, yeah, we'll go ahead and let them rock on up here. I don't know whether or not they're going to come here. Quite possibly. And if they do, well, we might have a thing or two to trade with them still. Well, in actual fact, they seem to be passing us on by, but I love that we have good old Green up here watching over us, keeping us safe. Uh, this isn't going to affect combat skill bonus. Mm, okay, maybe it will, Green. Maybe it will. We are going to go and give that backpack to someone else. We're just going to drop these things here because they will be able to be used by everyone else. But you, my friend, you're going to have to give up that backpack. I am very sorry about that. Very sorry, my friend. And the tribute is on its way as well. Well, isn't that just fantastic? All these things for us to look forward to. Oh, what a day. Oh. You know what? That's fine. You can hold on to that. You are just as good. You do you, my friend. You do you. We have yet another turret that has been completed. Uh, as to whether or not we'll have another person that's on constant guard, I don't think so at this stage, but we are going to want to try and turn these into something of a... Um, a kind of a learning place for our martial folks. We do have some training equipment up here, but we're probably gonna be changing that around a little bit, swapping some of that stuff into these places and just kind of gearing them up to be a place of martial prowess. 
that's the idea. Even if we don't actually use the equipment, it's just, you know, it's there to look cool. That's the main thing, right? This is wild. We actually have some fabric in storage. Amazing. It means that uh, once a lot of this engineering is complete, we're going to have this stuff rolling out all the time. But yeah, we can see that that hemp is quickly getting turned into more and more fabric. And that means more weapons and more armor for our team. It means that Park can continue working on Guardless Katanas. Well, do we want to have both? You know what? I think that's I think that's a good mix. And we've actually got two Nodachis. We are going to go ahead and get those split up between some of our team. Now, as you can see, the armor penetration on them isn't great, but they still do a really decent amount of damage. So as long as we can come against some unarmored foes, we've got some really good hitters in there. Well, it's the evening, and I'm pretty sure that neither of these two are moving any closer to us. I'm pretty sure that this is the uh, the collection, and this is the Band of Demands, and neither of them are moving at this stage. They're kind of just hanging out. I'm not going to complain. If they want to do other things in the world, they are big enough and bold enough to do it themselves so we'll let them continue on their way something that you will notice is that during the evening our power does go up a lot we have a lot of lights that are in operation and so that's going to be using up a whole heap of our power the question will be are our battery banks big enough and i'm pretty sure that they are come daytime with this now constructed as well we are going to be looking at expanding the katun district and finally adding in that nice big bar which is going to enable our folks to be able to hang out have some drinks in there and it's also where all of our food production is going to be happening it means that i can move some of these things potentially inside like the bread ovens and it can free up some more space for our crafters in this building here so at this stage i don't know if they are coming <laughs> So far, you know, we're, we're kind of safe. They are just kind of hanging out there. We might have to go and get them eventually. Or the alternative could be they've just decided that because our gate's down, they don't want to arrive. But that hasn't stopped them in the past, so I'm not sure. But what you'll be able to see here is that we have started expansion out the back here of the Katun district where it's uh yeah it's apparent that it's going to be a pretty large space and the punchy gar is going to be quite a large bar we're gonna need it and we're gonna have a whole heap of different places for our folks to be able to sleep on the top floor there the leaf district itself as well will extend the entire way down into this region here the way that i kind of foresee it as for our iron district it's it's not massive at the moment who knows if it will expand past this point but more than likely it will because once we have safety security that's when industry will continue to take over and will really start to pump out more materials and goods but at the end of the day what we are really trying to fund here what we're trying to build is an army an army that will be able to take on the holy nation and withstand attacks from it so our iron district that's a plan oh speak of the devil well we didn't think that they were going to arrive, and then all of a sudden, wham, bam, both of them have actually started to make their way down here. Our bandits are going to turn up, but the Sheik, the Sheik are here. I wasn't expecting that, and we're kind of actually not all that prepared for it. Now, we do have a little bit of food in here still. What we are going to need to do is, uh, is kind of get Gary to run in here, a plan that we have been planning uh, to go and uh, take what we have inside of here and just kind of offload that onto Gary in the hopes that he is going to be able to keep that safe. Now that does mean that the animal's food will be taken by the Sheik. I don't think we can really stop that at this stage, but at the very least Gary can get a little bit further away. As to whether or not they're going to take all of our bread as well, I'm not sure. I wouldn't be surprised. They like to take pretty much everything. Gary, if you could take that bread as well. Yeah, that'd be swell. So we're going to go ahead and open up these gates. And um, we're going to send Park out to have a word with them, to converse. Head on out there, buddy. And obviously we have... Um, oh, oh, you know, you're still up there, Green. 
Now, Green will shoot first un- and ask questions later. We do have him set to do that. Let's just hope that he doesn't decide to do that. Park, why have you not come outside yet? He is a very fast boy, so we are going to hope that he is going to uh, make it before they get too pissed off. Uh, Park, go and have a chat. No, 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 no. Oh, okay, so Green started attacking, and I think he's actually started attacking bandits that are heading towards here. Yes, yes, he has. Maybe not the best time for that to be happening. Wow. Okay. I I tell you what, we're going to have to grab everyone here, take everyone off passive, and the Iron District are going to be heading out here to go ahead and attack these targets. Um, yeah, very bad timing for all of this to be happening. Let's just hope that we don't antagonize them in some way. I trust you have our tribute ready, outcast. Help yourself. Take what we owe. And they are heading back inside, which is good. Obviously, Green is firing down from above. We are also going to take everyone from the Katun district as well, uh, excluding Green and excluding Gary. And we are going to run out here to start attacking these folks. Now, we are just saying attack instead of attack or we're going attack target because we need them to get in here first to actually begin the attack. Park, we're going to go ahead and get that off you and you have gone and made yourself a Nodachi, haven't you? I didn't actually think you'd have another one done in this time. So Park, I'm going to ask you to put those weapons in there because my boy, your weapons, your fists are the most efficient thing that we have in all of this place at the moment. And yep, 218 damage from that there. Um, thankfully, it looks like the bandits are kind of hitting themselves at this point. We just really need to hope that um, our boy up the top there does not miss. We're getting 182. We're getting a lot of damage coming in. We just don't want to misfire. Rain's running across like a badass, now rocking a Nodachi. Remen jumping in there as well. We do have backpacks on. Again, I'm not concerned with us having those backpacks on. We should be able to take care of this very quickly with both the Katun and the Iron District. We're going to have a few injuries, but at the end of the day, we're coming out of this on top. Gotaga the Great doing some damage there. And you know what? Oh my gosh, I think one of our bodyguards is actually doing something. The Mercenary Captain. Hot damn. Who would have thunk it? Now, Gary did run back out here. He does still have the food on him. I think it has kind of worked. They are on their way back out, the Sheik Scouts. We'll just really hope that we don't accidentally encounter them. We do have a spider here as well. And it looks like everyone is going to be able to get back to work. Now, they are all still on their jobs, so that should be perfectly fine. Let's just have Gary kind of hang off by the side here. Um, and Stubbs, seeing as you are so close to the spider, we are going to get you to go ahead and claim those rewards. Yeah, let's get some healing done. We're going to be fine. Looks like we survived both of those. Yay! Everyone, you can head back onto your jobs now after the healing has been done. Ah, <sighs> deep breaths. Let's see, how is everyone looking? Overall... Really, no one got all that hurt. Ruka did take a little bit of damage there to her leg, but really, we're pretty good. Now, Bonnie has gone hungry again, which leads me to believe that Bonnie's probably going to need a little bit of um, extra care. But look at that. They're leaving. The Sheik are leaving, I believe. I, I think they have done their full runabout, which means that they probably did go through our full stock. Yep, they're heading out there. No, they're running back in. Running back into here. I think we must have put something in there for a second, and then someone came to claim it. So we'll wait until the Sheik are done with their business before we get Gary to actually head back inside. Just off towards the side for now. And Barker, Barker, you're not really doing anything. I want you to go ahead and bodyguard Bonnie. Bonnie, who we are going to have to try and help somehow. Jaku, are you... Yeah, you're building our other one up here. So we are going to have one other person that's just hanging out up the top. 
uh, doing some work for us, making sure that uh, nothing bad is going to come our way. But yeah, so that's the first kind of sign that something is going to attack us because green will attack anyone that is potentially a threat to us. And that counts for animals as well. So more often than not, we are going to have the gate closed so we don't need to worry about that. And, well, we might be able to get some armor from these folks. These dust bandits don't have the best gear in the world, but they do have some things. And, ah, oh, wow, these Shek just aren't giving up yet. They keep on running back in. I think it's because we keep on producing a little bit of food. Make up your minds. Make up your bloody minds. And, oh, I hear attacking, which means that one of them has probably got back up to their feet. And that they have. Yup, green, are you going to be able to get them before they run away? probably reloading right now I imagine they're out of range at that point although in saying that he was shooting at them up here so I'm not so sure we'll let them we'll let them run away live to fight another another day but yeah we did some serious damage to them some of them would have just been straight like dead right away because we just did so much damage oh wow hang on green who are you firing at or what are you firing at can you fire that far? I know he does get a bonus from firing up here. But I'm not sure what his actual range would be. Yeah, the height bonus is plus 20. So yeah, it's dependent on where his target is. The height's fluctuating, that's really interesting. Range, 124 meters. Pretty good. Pretty freaking good. And uh, oh yeah, that power has skyrocketed. Excellent, that's great. I did put down one more little windmill over here and they're so close to intersecting. Wow. That is some efficient placement right there. <laughs> they, they haven't exploded yet. We're okay. And I think... No, the Shek haven't... They haven't left yet. That's really frustrating. It's really annoying. Can you guys uh, stop? Return for tribute. And they're gonna return again. So I, I I fear that if we do bring Gary back now with all that food, they are still gonna cause us some issues. So he's just gonna he's gonna come back inside, but we'll get him hanging out to the side. And just hope that these bastards are gonna leave. Yeah. Everyone's just gonna to have to be a little bit hungry for now. How is this construction going? Oh, we're getting there. Building materials. We've had a uh, a lot more use for them lately. You know what? We're going to chuck in a quick save here. Just that little that little lag spike there made me a little uneasy. But yeah, we've made some pretty serious progress today with uh, the sandcastle really turning it into more of a city. I'm impressed, team. I am very impressed. Oh dear. Things seem to be easing out there whatever was causing that little spike. And we have some more cacti coming in. Brilliant. Our stocks have been entirely just destroyed as of late with everyone else. We do have some more raw meat in here though, surprisingly enough. So we should be able to get some, uh, some cooking done on down here. Apparently we are out of resource right now. We do have some more raw meat just chilling out over here. I'm gonna go ahead and check on our jobs and see if we can maybe throw Bonnie a steak or two. I think we're okay. I'm gonna get Gary to run back now and put some food in. I'm pretty sure the Sheik have entirely left. We just have our mercenaries that are still kind of hanging out around here. So we're gonna go ahead and drop off this food and really hope that we're gonna be okay. Uh, we are gonna be dropping the meat wraps back in the animals feeding section. It looks like everyone's running in to get a bite to eat. I do not blame them. And Unfortunately, for some reason, Bonnie still seems to be very broken. She won't eat from this anymore. So whether or not, you know what, I, I, I think we might be able to fix it if I can just dismantle it and place it back down again. So we're going to take that food back again for a second. And uh, yeah, we are going to dismantle it for the time being. I really hope that that fixes that because I'm, I'm worried. I'm very, very worried about our poor pup. And there isn't too much that we can do to um, help with that. It is going to be under storage and it is an animal feeder. It's just gonna go here. Bonnie has perfect access to this so she should have no issue. No issue at all at doing that. Saru, can you can you help us out? Actually, who's closest right now? Actually, I, I, I don't know who is, but we're just gonna get you working on that. Just to be sure that someone is actually going to get it done.
Our boy Green is aiming at something, but we can't quite tell what from this angle. The lights have turned on, a power draw has started, it's not too much of an issue overnight, but it could be something to do with the bodies that are down here. Really, I'm actually okay with them being out here rather than incinerating them, because if we do attract animals and those animals are bone dogs, we can make use of them. Yeah. Or maybe it's you. Yeah, dust band us off in the distance. I don't think you're going to be able to get them, buddy, but that's okay. I do need to get another Terracer who's going to live up here, but we don't know who yet. And finally, the Punchy Gar is now open for business. We're going to have to... There's, there's a fair bit of construction that's going to happen there. A fair bit. But I'm going to do most of that off camera. Or at the very least, the planning of it, because um, we're going to be placing down a huge amount of things inside this building, but we have ourselves a nice old bar. The sandcastle is truly coming together to be something quite impressive. But with that, we are going to be wrapping up today's episode. Thank you so much for joining me for another one. As our wall is completed and we are sealed in once again, we will see exactly what awaits the sandcastle in the next. I've been Rykon, you have all been awesome, and until next time, stay tuned.